Thank you also to the organisers for inviting me to speak on some mahi I've been doing with the New Zealand Cerebral Palsy Register, specifically focusing on engaging with Māori Fano. But before I move on to that, ko waio, i te taha o toko māma, ko motopoho i te maunga, ko te ara ke wa te tai, ko te ro aroha te marae, uh, ko awarua te hapū, ko nai tahu te iwi, uh, i te taha o toko papa, no koti rāna ahau. I tipu wake aho, uh, no koti, uh, sorry, uh, i tipu wake aho, i te rohe o Tamaki Makoto. Ko Karen Wright tōko ingoa, no reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, my name is Karen Wright, I'm a public health physician and I work at Te Kipinga Hauwara Māori at the University of Auckland, which is Māori Health. Uh, prior to moving into public health, I worked and specialised as a general practitioner. So um, what I'll do today is to talk through briefly um, the New Zealand Cerebral Palsy Register Activation Project that I'm a part of, but specifically I want to talk to some findings and recommendations from Fano Hui that we held. And uh, from these findings and recommendations, I'd like to pull out some frameworks to support uh, effective engagement with Māori, which I think will be of interest to you. So first, uh, the New Zealand Cerebral Palsy Register. I think many of you will be aware that this is a standardised data set of birth and clinical information for people with cerebral palsy in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Important just to recognise that it is still relatively quite new. It was established in 2015, so it's still working towards achieving full ascertainment of children and people with cerebral palsy in New Zealand. But importantly, one of their aims is to identify and address any potential disparities. So this is really important for Māori and Māori health, as most of us are aware of the very significant uh, inequities that Māori experience across the health system. Now, the registered did some work with a summer student, Georgia Tionohita and Te Kupinga Hauora Māori researchers, looking at this preliminary data and seeing what was, uh, what was suggestive in terms of Māori health inequities. And it does appear that there are inequities in CP severity, in socioeconomic deprivation, and access to services for Māori. What was also identified is that there's uh, likely inequities in ascertainment of mokupuna Māori with CP. Now I'm choosing to use the word mokupuna today, so that includes uh, pepe, tamariki and rangatahi Māori, so uh, Māori babies, children and young people. This term also reflects uh, ancestral lines and connections, so it kind of positions us all as mokupuna, so we are all someone's grandchildren acknowledging those uh, ancestral lines. So it was these preliminary findings that led to the establishment of the activation project research team of which I am a part. So this is the rest of the team. It's a pleasure to be working with Professor Sue Stott, Dr Anna Mackey and Alexander Sarage from the register itself and Dr Sean Williams uh, based at the Liggins Institute at the University of Auckland. We've also had three fantastic research assistants supporting us in this mahi and I want to acknowledge Renata Kotua who has been central to the Fano hui that I'm going to discuss. Uh, also just acknowledging that um, this project was made possible um, from HRC funding through a health service delivery activation grant. So the project itself, the aim broadly is to support the uh, register to obtain comprehensive ascertainment of mokupuna Māori and to be able to undertake Māori health equity research. So it's very much foundational research. The specific objectives are around establishing relationships with key stakeholders and identifying strategies to support both comprehensive ascertainment, but also the collection of high quality ethnicity and clinical data. So we did this through our stakeholder mapping and engagement activities through narrative review and environmental scanning. I'm not going to go into detail into how we approach this work, but I just, it's really important that I do acknowledge that it is grounded in kaupapa Māori theory and practice. Um, for those who are less familiar with this, uh, kaupapa Māori is a way to approach research, but also a way of thinking, knowing and doing. It's not something that is very fixed and rigid in its approach, it's rather more fluid and evolving. It's certainly very scientific and formed. Um, and in particular it's critical and comes from tangata whenua, so it comes from whānau, hapū and iwi. 
I've got this quote up here from Leonie Pihammer um, because I think it describes some really critical aspects of kaupapa Māori research um, that are really uh, consistent with our mahi. So research must be transformative, it must create positive outcomes for Māori and importantly it must inform and answer the questions that are of relevance and importance to Māori. So this uh, philosophy and approach is really what ground, uh, grounds um, and directs our research. So to the whānau hui, the purpose of these was to build relationships with whānau. Uh, we really wanted to understand the knowledge and experience that whānau had with regards to the register and to get feedback on the registration process and resources. Um, I'd like to acknowledge um, that these hui were facilitated um, and the final report was produced by Susan Reid from Health Literacy New Zealand. The hui were also made possible from our performance-based research funding from the University of Auckland School of Medicine. So what we did is we had two rounds of hui. They actually turned into zui, so uh, unfortunately it coincided with the uh, level two, three um, lockdown in Auckland. And so we had a round of data collection zui to start, and then a second round of feedback hui, of which we returned the findings to Fano and gave them the opportunity to comment um, on these findings. So important and necessary in this situation to acknowledge the Fano, Namahi Nui, Kinga Fano. Um, they contributed so much, not just in terms of their time, but their incredible insight and openness. Renata Kotua, as I mentioned, uh, was our research assistant involved in this work and she did such a fantastic job of recruiting 12 Fano. Because we went to Zoe's, we could actually recruit from across the motu, which was fantastic. Uh, we had eight females, four males, all of which self-identified as Māori, or they had tamariki that identified as Māori. We had two participants that had lived experience of cerebral palsy, and we had a pretty even split of um, six who had heard of the register before and six who knew nothing about it at all. What I'm going to do is present the um, four key themes from these whānau hui findings. I'm going to put up some quotes that are reasonably long and you may not have time to read them all, but I'd like them to be there so if you do want to come back you can look at them in the future. So the first theme is that our health system is complicated and not always supportive. So participants experience in the health system provides really important context. I think as uh, both Jimmy and Amy have already brought up, um, if you've had an adverse experience before that is carried forward. So these findings are not specific to the register itself, these are participants comments about the broader health system. So in this first quote, um, the participant identifies how hard it is navigating the health system, but also how hard it is being Māori in the health system. Needs aren't always met, and there's the sense of giving, but not receiving. Participants also commented that there's often a sense of not being acknowledged as Māori in the health system and being misunderstood, and this can have significant impact on trust, I guess adverse impact on trust, and ongoing involvement with health services. Finally, participants uh, recognised that uh, there are inequities that particularly Māori and Pacific uh, have a different experience in the health system and they specifically identified here um, contact with physios and occupational therapists. Second theme I'd like to acknowledge is that knowledge of the register was fairly limited. Keeping in mind only five uh, of our whānau had mokapuna enrolled in the register and for four of these it was close to the time of diagnosis. So six participants knew nothing about the register but generally these people expected that they should really have heard and know a bit more about the register than they did because they were often quite active at researching around cerebral palsy. Participants really wanted clear information or clear communication from the register. They wanted to know what the register does and how it's progressing towards its stated aims. Participants really saw value, oh, some participants saw value in the register and particularly in having good quality data. They could see that it was important to capture data, to be counted, to make a difference. But really importantly, they expected the information to be used to support service planning. So of the six that had experience with enrolling, almost all found it challenging in some way. 
So for some, uh, or for most of them actually, the information demands on Fano were pretty significant and this was a barrier to enrollment for some. For uh, others, uh, there wasn't enough information to make a decision, so this prevented the enrollment. And finally, there was discussion by participants about how enrollment was really a revisiting of trauma and grief associated with receiving the diagnosis. And it was so critical that um, this potential grief needed to be recognized and acknowledged in order to prevent further trauma. The final theme I want to talk about is uh, that participants discussed ways that you could work towards Māori health equity. First of all, um, participants realised that it was important for both the data and the system to make a meaningful commitment to achieving equity. So again, that idea that they wanted the information to be used um, to benefit Māori health and Māori health gain. Some participants identified that uh, there would be benefits to incorporating a Māori worldview to support a more responsive service that avoids judgment. Now keep in mind that this experience of judgment came from uh, experiences in the health system in general, uh, wasn't specific to the register, but it was really influential in how some Fano felt about both the register and about the health system in general. Participants also talked about data ownership and data sovereignty issues, and particularly they talked about the inclusion of, of iwi and hapu. So it's from these findings that um, recommendations were made in the Health Literacy New Zealand report. So the recommendations are going to be presented under three kaupapa Māori principles. These were developed from the summer student work by Georgia Tionofita Tikapinga Hawara Māori and the uh, Cerebral Palsy Register that I mentioned earlier. Uh, these uh, three principles come from previous research that supported how they support inclusion and retention of participants in longitudinal research. So first of all, um, the recommendation was that the purpose and benefits of the register needs to be clear and relevant to Māori. So this is about making sure messages are clear and that they are accessible to Fano. Second, the team needs to be visible. So uh, participants or potential participants or whānau should be able to find out who the register is, where they come from and what they do. And this is so important to be able to establish a relationship. And finally, it was recognised that adults with CP should also see the value of being on the CP register. And this is because the uh, purpose and benefits of a register to adults with CP is likely to be quite different from parents with children who have CP. So the New Zealand Cerebral Palsy Register is working on these recommendations, um, in particular reviewing what and how information is accessed and viewed. So our second principle is manakitanga. This is about nurturing partnerships and actively doing things to make sure Māori can contribute to the register and its transformation. So first, this is about developing meaningful relationships with Māori at all levels. So by this, uh, we're thinking about whānau, we're thinking about clinicians, we're thinking about organisations. And so this is something that uh, we have actively been doing through our activation grant and relationship development. It's about making relationships with Māori organisations and working with iwi. Uh, so again, this is an action being undertaken as we explore uh, how we can work um, together with our Māori health or iwi health providers. Our third the, um, recommendation was to work together with the CP society. So there's a real opportunity to share information and encourage enrolments. And this could also uh, be a relationship that's mutually beneficial for both organisations, but also for Fano. And so that relationship is also being explored. And finally, there were recommendations around sharing information in progress regularly, both with Fano, but with also with interested uh, organisations and stakeholders. But also taking care um, to ensure that information is shared in interesting and potentially novel ways. It was suggested that stories, purako from family, would be a really valuable way um, to communicate uh, how the register can contribute, but also to share this, the lived experience, I guess, of cerebral palsy. And this is something that the register is also looking into. The 
Final principle is kaitiaki tanga. This is about working with Māori and acting in ways that protect Māori whānau and lived experience of cerebral palsy. So it's the idea of guardianship. So the first recommendation is about making it clear how the register can promote health and wellbeing for Māori with lived experience of CP. So I think this is around making um, it visible how the register is contributing towards Māori health equity and gain. And this is through the research that's being undertaken at the moment, but also planned for the future and the systems level changes that are being um, both developed and implemented. Second uh, recommendation was around making the enrollment process clearer and supporting whānau with it. So currently the register does have research offices that can help with the enrollment process, but through our HOE we found this wasn't uh, very widely known, so an opportunity to increase visibility there. Third recommendation is about using registered data to promote the health and well-being of Māori. Uh, here, keeping in mind that this can be at whānau, iwi and hapū levels. Uh, and then finally, there's an opportunity to support uh, health professionals caring for children and adults with CP. So um, this is really ensuring that clinicians, as has been discussed before, can invite whānau to enrol in a safe and supportive way, similar to the conversation around giving the diagnosis. And so the recommendation was here to consider training around how to deliver um, or invite someone onto the register in a safe way. And finally, the recommendation to review and change the information available for families um, with uh, and people with cerebral palsy. So this is that the um, information better meets the needs of the reader and so the um, register is revising and reviewing the information flyer and also the more detailed participant information um, that is given. So I mean these hui have really been so incredibly valuable for the register. It's led to many current but also upcoming actions, including, as I've already mentioned, uh, resources, uh, revision of old, uh, development of new, establishing relationships, partnerships, uh, also networks with organisations. But importantly, all of these recommendations are centred around Māori health equity. So it's uh, what stood out to me from these findings and recommendations is the importance of relationships and first impressions. And so that is what I'd like to touch on now thinking about what is it that supports effective engagement. I'd like to briefly uh, present two frameworks to you. The first is one that I developed when working at, with the population health team at Waikato DHB. And I did some qualitative interviews with Fano that had experience of the 2016 measles outbreak and to talk to them about their experience of receiving public health information and management. And there were three key themes that um, I identified. The first was uh, that a meaningful connection is required. And so this is about creating that space, that safe space for Fano, which requires respect of worldview, which may be different from your own as a clinician, um, that you acknowledge people's prior experience, the complexity of their lives, but also the diversity that it is to be Māori. Um, being Māori is not one thing, um, and there's a danger from essentializing what it means to be Māori. The information needs to be meaningful, so to do this you really need to understand individual or whānau needs, uh, information needs to meet these in a responsive way to make sure that your information is relevant but really clear and then um, that in itself can provide reassurance when people are fully informed. And finally that you need uh, meaningful support. So again you need to identify what specific supports are needed because they will be unique to the situation but quite often they're both social and economic. The second framework I want to bring up is the HUI process. So this is a framework used to guide culturally safe practice um, specific to Māori in a doctor-patient relationship. It was developed by the University of Otago as part of the Hauora Māori curriculum in Christchurch and it's now taught in the University of Auckland Medical Programme. So feedback on this uh, process actually indicates that it's easily learnt, it's well received and it can enhance the doctor-patient relationship. I'm not going to go through this in detail, that would need a, you know, a much longer session in itself, but I do want to just introduce you to it so those interested can look into it in the future. Um, so it starts with Mihi Mihi, this is the time to introduce yourself, the purpose of the interaction, also to check identity and this includes ethnicity. Whakawhanaunatanga is about making connections, so you can connect through personal, cultural, ancestral and through whenua, land. 
it's a reciprocal time, so it's not a one-way gathering of information. It's a time to share something about yourself as well. The co-papa phase is when you finally get down to business. So this is the purpose of the interaction. In this situation would be giving the invitation to uh, join the register. And finally, poro poro aki is a time to summarize what you've learned, to clarify that you've got it right, um, and to plan what will happen next. Now, if you think back, briefly, if you think back briefly to when I started, I started with Kawaiyo. Who am I? So you don't need to do a pipi hard to make to fuck up the tanga, but that's a an example of how um, you can make connections through um, your fucka papa and where you're from. So what does this mean for you? Uh, I expect you're quite a diverse audience. So as Fano with lived experience of CP, the register is uh, collecting information um, and providing this information. So importantly, they're putting actions in place to ensure that they have comprehensive ascertainment of Māori. And these hui have really helped direct the register on the actions to take. They are building relationships and partnerships to work towards holistic support for whānau. Um, acknowledging that other organisations actually have strong community connections and so are well placed to provide the broad and comprehensive support that we've heard uh, that you want. So um, for clinicians, there's a real opportunity to support comprehensive ascertainment on the New Zealand Cerebral Palsy Register and Māori Health Equity. So clinicians are such a critical point clearly in screening for cerebral palsy and giving that early diagnosis but also in referring or for enrolling on the register. So there are models and frameworks to guide culturally safe engagement and practice that I've, I've introduced some. Keep in mind though that medical students are being taught this and have for some years, so they may be more familiar than you with this. So it might be a bit of a tuakana tainer situation where you are the learner and they have the expertise. As an organisation, there's a huge opportunity to support, again, ascertainment and Māori health equity, but this time through system level processes and policies. So this includes ensuring that you have appropriate training and support for your clinicians, that you have robust ethnicity data, uh, and that you've got environments that are conducive to effective engagement with Māori. Now, I don't have time for you to read this today. It's a long quote, but I wanted it up in full just to really respect and acknowledge um, the participants and their contribution. But I just wanna pull out some ideas for you. Um, there's often a sense of giving and not receiving, of being misunderstood and feeling like a number. This quote and the ideas in it are not limited to the register alone. This is really reflective across the health service and it does uh, contribute. These ideas do contribute towards Māori health inequities. As this participant has done though, I laid on the wero, uh, the challenge to take up this huge opportunity that we have as clinicians and health organisations to reflect on how we contribute to these experiences um, and what we can do to support more equitable experience and outcome. So kia ora, I'll um, hand over to any questions should there be any.